SR. Just headed back to Vex Performance from Royal Oak Nissan in the Northwest. Back to some water, got some cliff bars, old rear main seal from I don't know what. I brought it along just in case. The camera equipment. I'm gonna be using the iPotato for the first little bit and then we'll switch over to the Nikon. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Subway Garage. We're at Vex Performance now, and we're about to stall the OS Skyking Clutch in the S15. Sweet. Jason's gonna open up the box for us. All right, guys, we're gonna do a little unboxing of this beautiful clutch here. Using the iPotato right now, we're gonna charge the Nikon batteries for a little bit. Oh, okay. So there we go. Nice. We got first ever quality clutch. I've had ACT my entire life, which isn't really. A... Actually, they're they're pretty good. Like ACT is pretty good, but hey. this is next level stuff. <laughs> yeah. So we got this hefty stack for a beautiful super single. You can see in there. We'll disassemble it, and we'll, when we put it on the car, and we'll show you the quality build of the OS bike. Sweet. Came with some pretty cool little pamphlets. Installation manual, gotta have that. Port specs in there, and all the stuff that you need. Just a little pamphlet. Got a couple pilot bearings and pressure washer for oil filters. Thank you, Rob. Royal Oak Nissan, go see them. Comes in the new OS Quicken smaller, oh, cool. tighter bearing so it runs on the actual OS pressure plate. Well, let's get started. We'll take the shifter out first and then we'll lift it up and take the drive shaft out, loosen the engine mount or subframe, tilt it down, and then yeah, take the trans out. Brand new OEM shift knob, brand new OEM shift boot, thanks to Nick Pra. Set these guys. Just need to cut these two zip ties and take this boot off. Yoink. To kind of pop this out. Oh, never mind. Okay, so it turns out. Um, on my old six speeds I've had, they've never had this or this. It's been double sealed. Jason and I have removed the two little snap rings. rings. Snap rings. So it was this one over top of this one. So you had to take this one and then this one just popped right out. Yeah. You didn't actually need pliers to take the bottom one out. So just pop the top one out with, uh, a flathead screwdriver. There's like little divots or indents on each side, and a flathead from each side, and it just just kind of pops out. And then you want to put the shifter back in neutral. Hey, if you grab that light for me. And then once the shifter's in neutral, it should just flop out like so. So with the shifter assembly removed, we're going to put the car on the hoist and take it up, get the drive shaft removed. Undo the subframe bolts or engine mounts, tilt the engine back, probably well, disconnect the inner floor piping as well. Uh, from previous times, this is my ninth transmission drop on an S chassis over 12 years or so. We gotta take the dry shaft off. So we're gonna have to take this bracket off over here. We're gonna be taking the downpipe off from the turbo elbow to here. 
And then we're gonna be taking the sleeve off, sleeve cylinder right here. And we're gonna be disconnecting the transmission wiring harness so it can stay over towards this side. And then we're gonna drop the, the front cross member just so it can give us enough room so we can access the top bolts because it's, it's pretty tight around. Drive shaft was made of stand-ins, as you can see. Really awesome company, affordable. I think it was 400 bucks for a steel drive shaft, custom made. Your one piece? Yeah. So now we have we have the four 14 mil nuts bolts that hold the drive shaft to the diff. So what Jason is doing here is putting a pry bar in the U-joint to use it as leverage so he can wrench off the, uh, the nuts, the four nuts on the drive shaft. So now Jason has removed the four bolts in the drive shaft. It's gonna kinda slip it off, pull it out of the trans, just like that. So we're gonna be taking off the clutch sleeve cylinder just two bolts. Check out that brand new OEM power steering rack from Nissan. Once again, from Robert Wicca, Royal Oak. Hit him up. <laughs> okay, clutch slave is off. So we have the two wiring harnesses unplugged. So now we're going to loosen off these two subframe mounts on each side. I don't know if you can see that. Right, right there. So those two nuts, Ugh. and those two nuts. And then we'll uh, take the bolts off the back of the trans that's holding it up, and then tilt it down. That way it'll give us enough room to undo the bolts on the top of the transmission housing. All right, now with the subframe loosened off a bit and the transmission disconnected, we need to take out the 12 or 13 bolts that hold the transmission on. Now that we have enough room to get in there, it's a little tight, but. All right, so these are the transmission bolts laid out. Bottom of the trans, top of the trans, starter bolts, mixture of 14 and 17 millimeter. All right, transmission's out after a little bit of grief. Got the stock OEM clutch, got 170,000 kilometers on it. The S15s do have a dual mass flywheel. It's pretty done, man. Well, not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. But you well, see from your you know, yeah. it's driving. <laughs> Good thing we got your rear main seal. Yeah, perfect. All right, so now Jason is removing the pressure plate on the OS spike and clutch. So we can disassemble it and get the flywheel on the car. Nice pressure plate. So we got a pilot bearing already installed in it from OS. That's nice. Okay, so after reading the instruction manual, the factory OEM flywheel bolts from Nissan are too long. So it says here, blah, blah, blah. Check the length, the remaining thread of the crankshaft. Cut the bolts so that the length should be 2 to 2.5 millimeters shorter than the thickness of the flywheel. So the OS flywheel is actually thinner than the OEM flywheel which means we have to bolt up the flywheel, 
measure how much of the bolt is sticking out of the flywheel and then cut it, which should be about 2 to 2.5 millimeters. <sighs> okay, so Jason found some Subaru flywheel bolts that we're going to use instead of the OEM bolts because the OEM bolt's too long, so the bottom of the, the white here is what sticks out of the, like, just flywheel. And then uh, the bottom of this white mark here is, that's the penetration into the crankshaft, which is like 15 millimeters. Total penetration is like 30 millimeters. And these Subaru bolts are 11 millimeter penetration into the crankshaft. So they're long enough to go through the, through the flywheel and about 11 mils into the crankshaft, which is four mils short, but um, yeah, it'll work. <laughs> Cleaning all the clutch dust now. Rear main seal has been removed. And we're gonna clean this up and then put the new one in. So we got the old rear main seal out. And we're gonna put a brand new Nissan OEM rear main in. You do want to make it flush and even all the way around. Main seal is in. We've got the old clutch and flywheel assembly. Clutch. Alright, we've got the little transmission plate metal gasket thingy. Lock that in the flywheel bolts. So for the flywheel torque specs, uh, fitting flywheel, CHR2, uh, SR20, 13 to 14 kilogram meters, um, 94 to 100 and, 101 foot pounds, Jack? 101 foot pounds. 101 foot pounds, I guess that's OEM spec as well. What are we going to torque these to, Jay? 98 foot pounds. Right in the middle of the spec, cross pattern. Okay, got the flywheel bolts torqued down, checked twice. Fitting in the first disc with the clutch alignment tool. This plastic little guy here. Jeez, grab the rest of the clutch. Put some Loctite on the pressure plate bolts. So the cover bolt torque spec is three kilogram meters, which is 22 foot pounds. Right, Jay? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which is 22 foot pounds. Replacing the release bearing with the OS. Can release bearing. You can see the difference in size. This is the smaller one, so it rides on the pressure plate. So we'll be cleaning that up. We'll be cleaning. That's the clutch fork. Contact fork points on the shift fork. Put some grease on there. We're going to be lubricating the release bearing shaft where the release bearing rides on. Grease that. But don't actually get grease on the spline. You don't want to get grease on the input shaft. Splines right there. You don't want to grease the pivot ball. So now we're ready to put the release fork. Get that into the boot. You want to make sure. You clip the spring into the pivot ball so it has good movement. And that's installed. Alright, 
So we have the transmission back in using a trans jack. Um, basically, jack it up just in front of the clutch and then rotate probably counterclockwise 15, 20 degrees and then up and then angle the back of the transmission up and it just kind of slots in there. <sighs> Almost done, Jay. Almost done. up uh, installing the clutch that Jason and our buddy Andy helped with me do. Great American Challenge, check them out on Instagram. Andy the Bruce. Over there. Say hi Andy. Yeah. <laughs> There's a project car. Project car. Got a coyote engine going in it. So yeah, we're gonna try and get this home right now. It's snowing, minus 20-ish. Got Michelin Pilot Sports on there. Should be okay. Calgary weather. <laughs> 